All right, just waiting for Patrick to join here. We're going to have a little conversation. Haven't done one of these in a long time, but uh, here we are. But he's going to be coming on here any moment. How are you all, everybody? Good? Okay. Just trying to fill the dead air, you know, that's an old radio trick. I just need to keep talking. Maybe I'll talk about what I had for breakfast or didn't have for breakfast. I'm waiting for Patrick. The real conversation is going to be beginning here in mere moments. No audio. No audio. Hello? You guys hear me now? Can you guys hear me? Can someone write uh, that uh, if you can hear me? Okay, you can hear me. Good. Someone said there was no audio. And you never know. Every single time I've done one of these, something crazy and awful and technological has happened. So, but that's not going to happen this time because we have good vibes. I'm waiting for Patrick to come on. Patrick McEwen, author, pulmonot, breathing expert, here to educate you about breathing. Someone's trying to join. That's not Patrick. You can't do that. I'm filtering all this out. We're, uh, what did I have for breakfast? You don't want to know. This is boring stuff. It came in this cup, though. Okay. What I had for breakfast came in this cup. Just filling up this dead air with nonsense, waiting for Patrick to come on. We're still a little early, so I'm not technically late yet, right? When I said 10, that includes that entire minute that is 10 o'clock. So he should be coming on any moment. I promise you. We confirmed this this morning because this has happened before. There he is. He's waving, but he's not asking to join. Patrick, you need to ask to join the conversation. We had a wonderful retreat that just ended a couple weeks ago. Costa Rica, beautiful place. Learned to breathe. I relearned to breathe. We talked about breathing. We talked about tapping. All this different crap you can do. Tapping all over the head. Beautiful people, beautiful time. Okay. Patrick did have a request. There he is. The fault was mine. Like a couple times, it never seems to work, but I did press the right button there, everybody. He should be coming on here any moment. I promise I press that. So let's try this again. Accept. Go live with Oxygen Advantage. I want to go live with Oxygen Advantage. I just just pressed it, I promise you, and something is not working here. Oh, Instagram. Go live with Oxygen Advantage. I'm pressing a button, everybody, that says go live, and you only get me. I'm sorry. I'm trying here. Someone else, uh, give me a little clue of what else to do here. I did everything. I was supposed to. If not, we'll just go through some questions anyway. I'm clicking request to join it is not approving request. Patrick just wrote. I don't know what to tell you, Patrick. I am. Uh, I'm approving you. I'm going live with you, and it's saying can't go. <laughs> yeah, oh, there he is. Yes. Almost. <clears throat> The joys of technology. He's, and, he's uh, coming in. He's. I have a black screen right now, but maybe not for long. There is a. Uh, uh, I think NSA is is blocking you out, Patrick, because you are helping improve people's lives too much. There you are. Hello. You're coming on. Flip that camera around. Right. That's what I'll have to figure out now as well. One second. Uh, cancel. Jeez, this Everybody, kind of you are talking One to two there. Luddites who, who write who write books all day and do not do IG Live. Pod. I mean, we're seeing, we're getting a good view of of your workshop. Uh, 
here. Yeah, that's, that's not, nice. That's not what I want, James. <laughs> there should seconds. be a little. There's a little uh, button thing that that you turn around the camera for. It's it someone, does no. I don't. Someone see, help him. See it. Help help this man. Help us. If not, you're just gonna have to stare into your camera the other way. Oh my God. Okay. You know, okay. every time let's, I've done let's one. Let's do of it these. this way, James. I'm not going to see you. Can you, you know see what? That's, that's, can you don't need me? to see me. You don't need to see me. As long as we can see you, you're fine. Right. That's great. Stay right there. Yes. And we're I just going to start things off. Everyone knows who this guy is, right? He came out with a yet another book, new book. Here it is here. Here it is here. More technology. Here it is here. Everybody. There it is, right there. Breathing for yoga. Patrick has been an expert in the space of breathing, anxiety, asthma, athletic performance for more than 20 years. You know him, you love him, you know his books, you know his wit and wisdom. We're here to ask him some questions that maybe he can't answer. But before we get to that, I'm gonna give you a few softballs. And here's one of them. And this is from Dreamlike Pictures, it says, if you have, uh, do you have to wear mouth tape forever or do you think that you can slowly wean yourself off it? I have been using it seven times a week for five years now. What do you think about mouth taping and having to wear it so, so often for so long? I think some people do, um, especially if they've poor muscle tone and this is where myofunctional therapy could be quite useful. Now, the only way to determine is, well, first of all, I would say is improve your everyday breathing patterns. If you can improve your breathing during wakefulness, that in turn will improve your breathing patterns during sleep. You will feel more comfortable breathing through your nose during sleep and your mouth is more likely to stay closed. Now, if, for example, you want to find out if you're able to sustain nasal breathing during sleep, go to sleep without the tape. And if you wake up with a moist mouth in the morning, you don't need tape. But if you wake up with a dry mouth in the morning, you do need a support. And tape can be one support and exercises as well to help to improve the, the function and the position of the tongue can also be important, myofunctional therapy. I will speak a little bit to this uh, dreamlike pictures. Uh, once I started mouth taping, this is probably five, six years ago, I've had to use it every single night. And I focus on all my other habits, did all of the myofunctional stuff. I'm a nasal breather, all that. I do not have the facial structure or jaw structure to close my mouth. And so whenever I go to sleep, no matter how healthily I am breathing throughout the day, I'm screwed. My mouth is opened <laughs> up and I have to use tape. Uh, so I've realized for me personally, everyone's different. I'm probably stuck with using this stuff the rest of my life, but it makes such a huge difference for my sleep quality and everything else that I just do it. How about you, Patrick? You still wear tape? You yeah. Still tape it up? I I still wear tape, and I'm wearing okay. tape a little, bit, a little bit longer than that, but uh, I won't even say how many years I'm wearing it. It's kind of an embarrassment yeah. at this stage, James. Yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> I'm, I'm with you on that. Okay, we've got one from Cultivate My Calm. Uh, so many yoga teachers talk about taking deep breaths. What are some of the ways of breathing during yoga that will help students stay connected to the breath and improve efficient breathing? I think very simple, uh, when you're going through yoga poses, breathe in and out through your nose and don't hear your breathing. A deep breath basically means that you've got lateral expansion and contraction of the lower ribs, that you've got good recruitment of the diaphragm. A deep breath doesn't necessarily mean a big breath. And I think it's very interesting, James, that we need to have a conversation around breathing and yoga and how it changed because Original yoga breathing was not about taking these full big breaths. Full big breaths is a recent introduction to yoga in around the 1880s. So what I would say to the practitioner of yoga, do all of your yoga exercises breathing in and out through your nose and just don't hear your breathing. That way you will have conservation of the breath. You are likely to increase CO2 in the blood. The air hunger is going to be a little bit stronger and that in turn will help to reduce your chemosensitivity to carbon dioxide to improve your everyday breathing from a biochemical point of view. 
That was actually the next question. Uh, should, when you are practicing yoga, is it always in and out through the nose? Because there's some practices that suggest getting out through the mouth. What's your take on that? Yeah, I think I haven't quite figured it out in terms of where mouth breathing came into being because it, it doesn't seem to, unless you were to do poor slip breathing, that you're altering the pressure of the exhalation. But you can breathe out slowly through your nose. Um, you know, the whole idea that oxygen is good and carbon dioxide is bad, I think that's what kind of spurs the whole breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And like nature, no animal does it in nature. Newborn babies don't do it. Intuitively, we don't do it. Um, so your nose is there for a reason. Your nose is not just there to breathe in through it. Your nose is also there to breathe out through it. And by breathing out through your nose, it helps to slow down your breathing. This helps to induce relaxation response. By breathing out through your nose, your body is conserving or it's, it's recovering the heat and moisture from the exhale breath. So you're less likely to dehydrate. So it's just better breathing. Hmm. But would you say the 100% of the breaths that you're taking during yoga class, I mean, because there's some, it just feels good on occasion to... What do you think? Think about that. Just doing that consciously, consciously doing that on occasion, maybe yeah, once in a while. There's absolutely no harm in doing it. But here's the question Is the instructor that's teaching that instruction believing that taking this full big breath is increasing oxygen delivery? Like, I often wonder why do the instructors actually know what is the purpose behind that? You know, is it a matter of stretching everything and then releasing it? Um, I think it's important to, to know the reasons behind it. And I have a feeling that the reasons behind it are not necessarily in tune with what the, the instructor is often teaching. And I, I found that as well. The original yoga, very different than this yoga being taught at, you know, Crunch Fitness down the, down the street from me. It's not to say, however, that this new yoga is is necessarily bad for you, right? Calisthenics are pretty good for you, but, but it is not where the tradition has been for 4,000 years, however long it's been around. I know that there's some debate. How long has yoga been around? Nobody knows, yeah. really, Nobody knows. you know, but, but I guess the, the written record is 2,500 years ago, 3,000 mm -hmm. years ago. We could go on and on about that, but we have other questions hot off the grill here. I mean, they're just coming in. So here is uh, one person, our, our brand Dorf, uh, I, I think I got that wrong. Any tips for bronchitis or cat allergy? One side of the nose is closed. Yeah, absolutely. Um, anytime you have nasal congestion or narrowing of the airways in the lungs, use breath holds. Now, if it's just nasal allergies you have and maybe some bronchitis that you have, Start off with breathing in, breathing out, and holding your breath for maybe just about five seconds or so. Then breathe normally for about 10 or 15 seconds. And then slowly increase the length of your breath holes, maybe up to about 10 or 15 seconds. So that's one way to help decongest the nose. So in very simple terms, if you ever want to open up your nose, provided that you're not pregnant, you don't have cardiovascular issues, you don't have anxiety or panic disorder, breathe in through your nose, breathe out through your nose, pinch your nose, and gently nod your head up and down as you hold your breath. And even if you do it for a count of 15 nods, and when you let go there, you'll instantly feel that your nose is going to be a little bit easier to breathe through. Wait about 30 seconds to a minute, repeat it. Repeat it about five times, but improve your everyday breathing. Because when you improve your everyday breathing, you're going to be less susceptible then to triggers such as cat dander. And always, as part of everyday breathing, is, is breathing in and out through your nose. Okay, our brand, if you're listening right now, why don't you try that out and give us a little update in, in a couple of minutes and see how that's working for you. By the way, everyone, I'm not looking, I'm not watching a movie over here. I have questions coming in over here. It, it looks like some, uh, you know, airplane situation. All the amazing technology I've put together for this talk. Here's the next question from Julie B1234, I had COVID three weeks ago. I have asthma and I've been off work for four weeks now. I'm prescribed steroids. Is there anything else I can do? COVID, yes. asthma, what do you do? Yeah, 
I would do it. This is going to be, Julie, depending on how you feel. Say, for example, if you're feeling very fatigued, what I would do is start off very, very gentle. If it's just inflammation, I don't mean just, but if it's only inflammation in your lungs, I too would actually start off with that last breath hold exercise, breathing recovery, because when you have symptoms, it can be difficult enough to slow down your breathing. And one alternative to that is you could breathe in, breathe out and hold your nose and walk five paces holding your breath and then let go and breathe in through your nose. You could, for example, do that five repetitions five times daily. It's a very gentle exercise. As you breathe in and out and hold your nose, nitric oxide pools inside your nasal airway. Then as you release your nose, you're carrying that nitric oxide into your lungs. It's a bronchodilator. And also as you do that little breath hold, carbon dioxide increases in your lungs and blood and that's a bronchodilator. Another thing that you could be doing is doing breathe light. So normally, say for example, when I get COVID, what did I do? I did breathe light, whereby I deliberately reduced the volume of air that I was breathing to create air hunger. This signifies that carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is increasing in the lungs and blood. And the whole purpose of that is to help get bronchodilation because CO2 is a bronchodilator. But then I would do a maximum hold. I would breathe in, breathe out, and hold my breath, and I would walk as many paces that I could, sustaining nasal breathing. Sorry, sustaining the breath hold, but having nasal breathing at the end. Then I would do breathe light again, maximum breath hold, breathe light, maximum breath hold. So my routine, I was doing between 10 and 15 minutes, six times daily. And within two days, I could six. really feel the six times daily let's take take me through that again there's a lot of breathe light breath hold so yes. if i am writing notes right now on my phone or or with a, a quill pen whatever yeah. what am i writing down what okay. what am i going to document here do four minutes of breathing light so that basically means taking a very soft gentle breath in through your nose and a relaxed and a slow and a gentle breath out and you were doing it correctly when you breathe less air into your lungs and that generates a tolerable feeling of air hunger. So you do that for four minutes. If during the four minutes you feel panicked, take a rest. Take a rest for 15, 20 seconds and then go back to it. So it's all about gently softening and slowing down your breathing to create a tolerable air hunger and you're doing it for a block of about four minutes. After you do that block of four minutes, then do a maximum breath hold. And don't do this if you're pregnant but also don't do this if for example you have the symptoms of long COVID such as fatigue etc this is solely to help open up the airways if you do have symptoms of fatigue don't do long breath holds instead just focus on the breathe light the long breath hold is take a normal breath in and out through your nose pinch your nose and hold and walk as many paces as you can holding your breath and keep on walking while holding your breath to build up a moderate to strong air hunger. Don't overdo it, but at the end, let go, breathe in through your nose, get your breathing under control. Then do another four minutes of breathe light and then do another maximum breath hold. That's a 10 minute session. Now that would be good if you were to do 10 minutes at eight o'clock in the morning, 10 minutes at nine o'clock, 10 minutes at 10 o'clock, maybe 10 minutes at two o'clock in the day, three o'clock, four o'clock. Don't do it directly after food. It's a tremendous sequence that I have found over the last 21 years working solely with normally with people with asthma, but we also used it with COVID. And as I said, I used it myself too, and I found that it really worked well. It's a combination of breathe light, which is dampening the stress response, stimulating the vagus nerve, activating the relaxation response. And then we do a stressor exercise to stress the body and mind. So we're lowering blood oxygen saturation, we're increasing carbon dioxide. It's almost that we're getting the immune system and we're giving it a shake. We're going from relaxation into stress, relaxation into stress. But all of, whether it's doing the breathe light or the long breath hold, it's still helping to open up the airway. And I think the focus or the target on the immune system can be very important um, in terms of helping to get easier breathing. Amazing, okay. So that is a four minute breathe light practice, everybody. And then if you're able to walk around, you can walk around and hold your breath on the exhale right? Okay. Yes. You're holding your breath on the exhale. When you come back to breathing, you want to be breathing in and out of the nose very calmly, very rhythmically. And that whole process, we're going to do again, breathe light, and then we're going to do those, those maximum breath hold walks. Yes. 
And that will take about 10 minutes. And you can try to do that four times a day. I do that often when I'm walking. I walk twice a day, walk my dog in the park twice a day. I uh, love it. And I noticed well, I've had COVID a few times, something that really helped me, uh, especially when I got it the first time and, and was, was pretty leveled by it, is most of the expansion in our bodies happens not in the front, not in the chest, but in the back. So if you're constantly laying on your back, if you're laying on a sofa, if you're laying on a bed, and you're trying to breathe, it's not the most efficient way of getting air in and out. So I would lie on my stomach, right, and put a pillow here and do some coherent breathing about six seconds in, six seconds out. And I found this created so much relief and allowed me to breathe so much easier. So between the breathe light, the breath holds, you might want to introduce that. And if you're struggling, especially at night with COVID, breathing issues, sleep on your side, sleep on your stomach, but sleeping on the back is, is bad news uh, for people who have chronic respiratory problems. Coming right up, we've got, I mean, they just come, they just keep coming in here. Um, so uh, one fellow just asked, uh, sorry to bring it back to, to sleep tape, mouth taping. Uh, I, I say sorry because this is 90% of the questions I get are, are on this as well. Some fellow asked, like, how do I do that with a beard? Well, look oh. at Patrick. He's got, he's got Can that going him? on. Can I show I've got a little bit going on. Yeah. This is it. And you just put it on your lips <laughs> and you use that this so is you just put tape, it on your lips you're not taping you're not taping up your face up here just put no, a little piece can, on your lips we no hair do, on my lips we can so. do it differently though james oh. and the reason being okay. is because we i think we also need to have a conversation around obstructive sleep apnea and mouth puffing because if for example you have somebody with say moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea taping right across the lips if it prevents mouth puffing can worsen the sleep apnea severity now this is my own tape as you know, um, but I'm just going to give a demonstration. It's elasticated, you stretch it, and this is specifically for beards. This is a black tape. And you gently stick it there, and you're holding it, and it adheres. There's an elastic tension now that's pulling my lips together to ensure I'm breathing through my nose. So in that way, then it would, say, allow mouth puffing, or say, for example, with somebody with anxiety or panic disorder, you don't want to be covering the lips. So there's different options. There's plenty of different tapes out there, but this is our own tape. Um, and if, if you don't mind, if I can mention the brand name is Myo Tape. I know that's a blatant plug, but... Uh, Go right ahead. Friends. Go right ahead. <laughs> you guys can use whatever works for you. Yes. You know, uh, I use, and, and that's a good point about, I, I have never said sleep tape is right for everybody. A lot of people say that. They are wrong. About 60% of the population breathes with their mouth closed at night. So if you're breathing with your mouth closed, you don't need sleep tape. People, no matter what hostage tape is, is trying to tell you. So, um, okay, moving on. But if you do breathe with an open mouth, you, you need it. Uh, let's, let's hear one from uh, Angelica Arm. My question is for Patrick. That would be you. What does he think about applying both Buteco breathing exercises and Wim Hof breathing on a daily basis? Meaning I practice Wim Hof breathing in the morning, and try to apply slow breathing during the day while exercising. Is it compatible? Yeah, I think it's a good fit. Um, there's two different things going on there. Now, so if you're doing Wim Hof, you're doing, it's primarily, a, it's a stressor. You have hyperventilation, you have long breath tolls. The hyperventilation is getting rid of a lot of carbon dioxide. That allows you then to do a long breath hold, which in turn is creating a hypoxic response. So it is a stress response. Now, and I think it would be very important to do breathe light, do buteco after doing a bout of hyperventilation because this will help to normalize your, your minute volume, your breathing volume. It helps to normalize carbon dioxide. So I think it's a good idea. The two are compatible. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, we got some more here. We've got one from uh, Ren Broska. Uh, what is the best yoga pose to open up the rib cage? before breath work? I have to confess, in terms of yoga, I contributed the breathing part of it. And the person who contributed the yoga part and knows more information is Anastasis Tanzi. Now, we also had Magdalena Crailer contribute, who has just written a PhD on yoga breath. So that's why it was a culmination of my experience working with breathing, Anastasis' experience working with yoga, 
and Magdalena's work from a theoretic perspective that we brought it together. So, you know, regardless of the yoga poses, I would always be encouraging you to be aware of that breathing is multidimensional. And very often the biochemical dimension of breathing has been forgotten about in yoga. That wasn't always the case. As I said, up until 1880, the breath was described in yoga sutras, such as Yoga Sutra 2.5, the breath was described as long and subtle. Now we have to think about long, but more importantly, we have to think about subtlety of the breath. So regardless of the poses that you're doing, which serve specific purposes, think about your breathing. And don't just think about your breathing from a biomechanical point of view. Also consider the, the biochemical point of view. And I'm going to go one step further. And it goes back to the question with regards Wim Hof in the morning and Buteco in the day. Buteco is about your everyday breathing. That's about your breathing when you're sitting. That's about your breathing when you're walking. That's about your breathing when you're sleeping. And that's important. And also take your breathing off the yoga mat. It's not just how you breathe while you're going through your asanas. More importantly, is how do you breathe outside of that? Because it's your everyday breathing that will influence your breathing on the mat. Get your everyday breathing right and get your breathing on the mat right. I learned a trick from DeRose. Uh, this was years and years ago. A little breathing exercise is really good for helping to expand that rib cage. It's called a violoma pranayama. And what you do, and you can do this, everybody, if you'd like to, if you're in a safe place, if you feel able to, you take a breath, very deep breath, very low breath. You pause for two seconds. You take another breath on top of that. You pause for two seconds. You are not exhaling. Take another breath on top of that. You see where I'm going. You pause for two seconds. Another breath. And you keep filling up this vessel that is your body, right? And it, that air keeps building up till you are at the very top of your capacity. To probably make Buteco uh, practitioners cringe, but to your old yoga practice, top of your capacity, you hold and you squeeze everything in, okay, for 10 seconds, and then you release. So again, you inhale, pause for two seconds, inhale again, pause for two seconds, do that till your maximum capacity, hold for 10 seconds, and release. And he claims that this practice goes back thousands and thousands of years because the DeRose version of yoga, he was saying much of what you have been saying, that the new version that so many of us have been practicing uh, hardly resembles the actual yoga that's been around for a long time. So you can try that out. Yes, please. Can I just step in there, James? Yeah. Because yeah. Yeah. I suppose I always have to be conscious that Breathing exercises, when we hear an, a specific breathing exercise, the people who really need breathing would find that very, very challenging. And I often feel that we need to get the basics right first in terms of improving, you know, nose breathing, the biochemical dimension, helping to open up the airways, improving their the bolt score, the control pause. And then I think it's a lot easier. You know, when we think about a yoga breathing exercise like that, people were living healthier back in the day, they were breathing better. And if you're breathing better, it's easier to bring in a breathing technique. Because I think, you know, we hear say different breathing exercises, but always the question to ask is, is that breathing exercise suitable for the person that's putting it into practice? So I'm just gonna throw that out there. Right. I think that is a wonderful thing to add. And I want to mention something else that DeRose told me. Yoga was ne never intended for people who were sick, who were looking to be healed in some way. It was always for people who were already healthy, okay? And it was meant to get you up the next rung of human potential. So if you have severe asthma, if you can hardly, you have COVID, this is a terrible exercise for you to be doing. In fact, most of the exercises taught at your local yoga studio is probably bad news. This stuff was designed, once you were healthy, once you were fit, once you were ready to go, then you were welcomed into this secretive practice to help develop your body in different ways. So if you are one of those people, the Vialoma Pranayama can be beneficial. If you have COPD or had one lung removed, it's probably a bad idea. So that is a very good thing to mention out there. Use common sense. 
get the basics down, get the foundation down, become a normal breather first, which is gonna take a lot of people a long time, then you can start to do the fancy crap. And until you're there, stick with everything that Patrick is mentioning. We've got a couple more questions right now. We have one from The Quiet Run. <laughs> it says, how do you approach a condition where a person has 25% obstruction in their nose, and while nose breathing is technically harder than mouth breathing, I'm struggling to switch to nasal breathing 100% without my heart rate going up 10% higher compared to mouth breathing. I really want to switch. I've been trying for over four months now. It just doesn't work out for me. Help him. There's a couple of things that will feed into the degree of air <laughs> hunger that you're, you're experiencing while breathing in and out through your nose. One is, it could be your existing breathing pattern. Like, I was a chronic mouth breather, and I remember when I switched from mouth to nose breathing, I too felt suffocated because you're, all, you're going all of a sudden from breathing through the mouth to breathing through the nose. If you're feeling that way, the best exercise to do are actually breath holds because the breath holds will help to alleviate the sensation of air hunger, but the breath holds will also help to open up your nose. Now, when you talk about a 25% obstruction on one side of the nose, the question to ask is, is that a mechanical obstruction or is it due to um, rhinitis? In other words, that the blood vessels in the nose have swollen. When you do breath holds, the blood vessels in the nose will shrink. That makes breathing easier. You don't always need to have a fully functioning, perfect nose to breathe through your nose. And what may be driving that air hunger it could be your existing breathing pattern. So what I would do is, as James said earlier on, go back to the foundation. Do small breath holes, start off gentle stuff, increase the breath holes, and practice doing you as best as you can to sustain nasal breathing. Now, what may help is to get a nasal dilator. So this is based on the cottle maneuver. You put one finger here and one finger here, just gently prise your nostrils. So there are devices on the market that will help to generate or open up the nose to make it easier to breathe through. So suffocation as a result of switching to nose breathing or air hunger as a result of switching to nose breathing. And I assume this is during rest. Think about your existing breathing pattern. Think about nasal obstruction, but also in terms of thinking about you know, the anatomy. It could be, do you have a small nose? Um, but, you know, you can make, make um, some progress with that. Yeah, so I had read that about 30% of the population has something called nasal valve collapse. So either this tissue here is too loose, it's too small, something is going on here, not so much up, up here, but here. And so uh, I don't want to mention any product names here, but there are strips you can put on your nose called uh, Breathe Light. There are other inserts you can put in there that increase the airflow by around 30%, especially if you're somebody with small nostrils. I would always suggest that people try that out when they're first trying to convert to nasal breathing. I don't know if you agree with this, Patrick. We don't agree on everything, but, but my, I, I would suggest you can try that out and see if that helps. And the Coddles Maneuver is great. If you do that, and you can breathe significantly better, then maybe those strips can help you. What I've found, or at least what I've heard, is that people who have used these, maybe it takes a couple weeks, maybe a couple months, they've then been able to wean off them because all the other structures in the nose are starting to open up. I wanna mention one other thing about rhinitis. There is this bizarre study, I don't know if you've read it, Patrick, where this guy had pretty severe rhinitis and he started humming yes. for 10 minutes Four, time, four times a day, and, and he cured up all of his rhinitis because of nitric oxide, because of CO2 and all that. So I am trying to get a citizen science study up where we can get a bunch of people, maybe a few hundred people with rhinitis. You have your controls, then you have your people do this 10 minutes, four times a day, and then you compare those two populations. Not a lot of funding out there to do this, but I think we can do it for, for free or cheap. But that is something, it is free, it is easy. Humming has so many other benefits that uh, you will get from just doing it, and it might even help open up your nose. We got a couple more, everybody. I know I promised a half an hour, but we're just, we're just cooking here. What about alternate nostril breathing? That's something you, you have your clients do, people with asthma, anxiety, athletes? Typically, I don't. Um, well, 
I have them block one nostril and I don't typically switch from left to right. But say, for example, we were doing exercise outside today, physical exercise, and I was deliberately having people block one nostril, but that's more to restrict airflow to create a resistance to breathing. I think the alternate nostril breathing is very interesting. I'm not so sure if, for example, when you breathe through the left side of your nose, whether it's activating the right hemisphere of the brain and vice versa. But there have been studies showing that when you do breathe through the left side of your nose, that it helps to optimize heart rate variability. It helps to drop um, blood pressure and it helps to activate a relaxation response. And conversely, when you breathe through the right side of the nose, it's more enlivening, that it's more excitatory. So I think there's something in this um, and I think the yogis knew that there was something in it. So, uh, yeah, it's like it's a good technique. Now, again, when you're doing alternate nostril breathing, could you combine it with light breathing that you're improving not just switching from one side of the nose to the other, but you're also improving your breathing from a biochemical point of view, that you're gently breathing lightly during the exercise. So you're, you're you know, you're hitting two things with the one. Last question here we've got, are there any good breathing techniques for physical activity to conserve energy, increase stamina, and more? For instance, how do I breathe when I'm running? Read the oxygen advantage. <laughs> this is what we have been talking about for years, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Switch to nose breathing during your physical exercise, but your ability to do your physical exercise with your mouth closed is going to be based on your underlying breathing patterns. So there's a few things that we do with physical exercise. One is breathing in and out through the nose, and the other is that we do bring in breath holding during physical exercise. So we have dynamic apneas, and uh, that's more to the breath holding during physical exercise is purposely done to increase carbon dioxide and lower your blood oxygen saturation to cause the body to make adaptations, include delayed, delayed lactic acid and fatigue. It's increasing the buffering capacity inside in the muscle compartment. I think there's a lot that we can do with physical exercise. And the way I would look at it, James, is, you know, people don't have time to do physical exercise and do breathing exercises and do meditation. I'm standing in a cross trainer here as you figured out when I couldn't get my camera going earlier on I'm 30 minutes every day on this breathing in and out through my nose doing breath holds with my attention dispersed throughout my body that's my physical exercise my breathing exercise and that's my meditation and I think these can be stacked and it's a really really good way to do it especially if you're if you're stuck for time there it is everybody breathing for yoga Patrick McEwen, where can we learn more about you, Patrick? I mean, everyone knows you anyway, but maybe you just tell people where they can learn more about this, this amazing book, more about your amazing work. Oxygenadvantage.com and youtakeoclinic.com. And, uh, of course, we're on Instagram, so uh, follow us. And we, we have a really exciting app as well, James that I put a lot of work into that's free. So if people want to be introduced to breathing, um, maybe download the app, it's Oxygen Advantage. There's a lot of stuff in it. And uh, yeah, and thanks very much. And of course the books, including Breathing for Yoga, I think you'll find it an interesting read. A lot of work went into it. Three contributors, myself, Anastasis Tanzi, and Magdalena Crawler. And others of course as well, but that's it, yeah. Amazing, thank you, Pat. Patrick, thank you. Uh, thank people you, asking questions. Thank you, Pulmonaut. Here's the tricky part where I have to figure out how to save this thing because I screw this up every time, but <laughs> we'll see what happens. Adios, everyone. Till, till next time. Okay. I believe he logs off and oh, then I'm, I'm able to save I'm this. Here. You um, can one second log there. off. I can sit, and that's when I save it. I will see what happens. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Somebody tell me how to save this thing. I always screw this up. Someone could write directions on how I can save this conversation. I'd be really stoked. Somebody could tell me 
how I can save what just happened here. Be very happy. In the comments, if somebody could please tell me. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and have to look it up on online. I know you guys know what you're doing here. I know you can help me. Don't close it until you save it. I will not. How do I save it? When you click, it gives you an option to share to your page. When I click what? What, what do I click? Just in the broadcast. Okay. How do I? Do? Okay. So I end the so consensus is I end the broadcast, then it gives me an option. You have to end it. Yes. The broadcast, it will give you an option. Breathe through. You're awesome. I hope this works. We'll do this again soon. Bye-bye.